guy, HMR here, to let you know today, if you're somebody with codependency, and you're still really mired in that, and you've just come out of, or you're still involved with, somebody with borderline personality or narcissistic personality, still in that relationship on off or the breakup stage, you've been ghosted or they're come, they've are they hoovered you back, wherever you might be in this process and journey as somebody with codependency. What you really need to know the codependency recovery requires as one of the basic foundational aspects of healing from family of origin, the wounded inner child and self-differentiating and self-differentiation is that you need to reestablish a connection with and to what has been lost in the woundedness of your childhood, healthy narcissism. So this healthy narcissism, this self-partnering, this feeling so good inside, positive about yourself. So many people think there's something wrong with that in this day and age. So it's not narcissistic personality disorder to have a healthy ego, to have a healthy sense of accomplishment. They have positive qualities. You got to embrace those. Too many people with codependency don't know how to do that, aren't able to do that, haven't found that place in self yet, to embrace being confident, to have the idea that you have self-worth and self-esteem and that you matter too. I know we don't have control over whoever likes us or doesn't like us or who we're going to matter to or who we don't. But when you matter to yourself, everything else pales in comparison. And that's what's really important about that. So there's so much that has to do with where people with codependency in different ages and stages of childhood development get compromise to one degree or another, don't really learn the skills and tools as much as one needs to grow forward with healthy self-esteem and healthy self-worth. So this critical period of healthy narcissism in young childhood can be interfered with, and that's why people can come out of that childhood with codependency or narcissistic personality disorder and codependency or BPD and codependency. But if you have codependency and no BPD or NPD, then what you really need to do, because people with BPD overcompensatorily in an offensive way do it, people with narcissistic personality disorder do it through the false self, people with codependency also do it through the false self. Well, what does quote it mean? For those with borderline personality, it means seeking identity through others. For those with narcissistic personality disorder, it means seeking supply. For those with codependency only, it means an externalization out of needs into the chaos and drama of other, the BPD or the NPD or whomever, and you not realizing that you are continuing to abandon yourself. And the thing is, if you have a healthy ego, in, in, when you get into codependency, healing, and recovery, and you find that incredibly healthy self-partnering relationship to self, it, it will take the place of your current dysfunctional relationship to more self. Then it increases. This process increases your self-esteem and your self-worth. And maybe it took me a long time to learn this in my life, too. Because other people will judge us, right? But what if I just made a statement? I'm a really strong person and, and a really um, capable person to help other people in their healing journeys, for example. Now, some people out in the world would say, oh, wow, look at her, she's so full of herself. Because this is the default position of culture of I don't know what else out there that people think that people that are competent or people that feel good about themselves or positive about their skills are somehow narcissists. And nothing could be further from the truth. Because narcissists don't feel good about anything. It's overcompensatory, seeking of supply through others in their codependent reality, wherein they lack a sense of self, their totally false self. Not the same thing as somebody with codependency 
and healing and recovery, learning how, you know, with the inner child healing, family of origin and self-differentiation, learning how to really be self-partnered, become self-partnered, and doing that work increases your self-worth and self-esteem, not to an overinflated place of like being like the narcissistic false self. No, being more who you are, being more of your authentic self, which includes healthy narcissism. In other words, a self-reference that you are you, that you exist, that you are there, that you matter, that you have skills and abilities. Anybody who claims to be good at something that they're actually good at, there's nothing narcissistic about that. It's people with narcissistic personalities who are always saying they're really great at everything that they they don't know how to do. Or, there's a vast difference between people with codependency, borderlines and narcissists, etc. That you really need to learn in your healing and recovery journey from codependency how to self-partner, how to be self-partnered, what that process is with all the other moving pieces of healing and recovery as I work with clients, the way I describe it, so that you can start feeling good about you. Because somewhere in your childhood, you weren't able to feel good about you. A parent didn't mirror that back, or you had intermittent reinforcement. I mean, it's, it's very different for different people with codependency. But the meat of the message here is it's important for people to know you know yourself. That you can think of yourself as a good person. That's not narcissistic. That's not egocentric. That's not tooting your own horn. Because if I say to you right now, I'm happy. I feel good inside myself. I love myself. I enjoy my own company. I enjoy other people's company. I'm not saying anything about myself that indicates anything about anybody else. So what does that mean? Well, I'm saying I feel good about myself. But what's missing in everything I just said that's about me at this moment, just as an example? I didn't say I was better than everybody else. I didn't say I was perfect. I didn't say I knew it all. I made statements that are commiserate with who I authentically am and not anything that goes beyond, like I'm not using superlatives. I'm not bragging. I'm just making self-confident healthy self-esteem and self-worth statements that are true about who I am and knowing myself. You see the difference there? But culture often will decide for us. People will think that making a statement is positive about yourself. It isn't making a statement about in comparison to anyone else. So it stands as a statement of my healthy self-esteem and self-worth. So I'm just giving you an example what you need to do for yourself in your own life, your own relationship that you may be building in a self-partnering way with yourself now in codependency, healing, and recovery, or, you know, wherever you are on the journey that you need to know that you have worth and esteem. So that's healthy balance, right? That's healthy ego strength right there. And that's what more people with codependency, that's what people with, with the healing and recovery journey from codependency, that's what you're seeking to find in yourself and to heal the wounded inner child, change the negative core beliefs that go with that woundedness, the injunctions from parents, those family rules and dysfunctional family system injunctions that might not have been outright said to you. Don't feel, don't talk. Children should be seen and not heard, which some parents actually say as well. But you in your childhood, if you have codependency and you've been involved with somebody with cluster B, et cetera, and you're, you're like lost and you don't know how to get away from that person. Well, it all comes back to you, not what they did to you, but, it, but in your own healing and recovery journey, I'm out here to work with you to resonate with me. It comes back to finding yourself, going back to heal the family of origin, to heal the wounded inner child to look at what really happened. And for some people, it's not huge, horrible things that happened, but it was enough that when you were younger, it was more impacting than you might think of something right now and think, well, I was like five and that doesn't matter. You know, I, I did fine. So it's important for people who have codependency, especially if you're still trying to get out of the relationship with the cluster B, 
or you're now in the surviving the relationship breakup phase, but how do you do that without all this ruminating and the longing and yes, the chemical soup of why you're in withdrawal and how do you go no contact and stay no contact or if it's a family member or you're co-parenting and you need low contact. How do you do all that when you just can't stop thinking about them because you're all other focus? To the absence of knowing who you are. So codependency to take the journey from there, lostness, to what I'm just saying about myself as an example because I'm not perfect and I'm not comparing myself to anybody else happy in my own skin i know myself and i know what my weaknesses are and that's balance right and so i have healthy self-esteem healthy self-worth it's not perfect right but i have that and then i have this ability to know what i'm strong in and what i'm not so strong in and that's fine and i'm not comparing myself to anybody else in the world so i get to be content within myself and that's what everybody with codependency today who's still over focusing and ruminating on that personal BPD or that narcissist or the parent or the adult child, whatever it is, you need to take care of yourself. You need to get into your own healing and recovery journey so that you too can know a healthier you. And what does that start off with in the healing process? It's finding self or part of self again that you've lost and maybe it's been lost from you since childhood not wholly, but in part, in your wounded inner child. And you need to grow forth in the healing and recovery toward healthy narcissism, to having a healthy ego, wherein you can see your strengths and your weaknesses and your vulnerability, and that's all positive and fine. And you can feel good inside of you because you've self-partnered and you understand and know yourself authentically. Get out of the codependent false self. Get out of the externalizing things. It's an incredible process to work with people on their journeys. It's an incredible process as someone who's taken it and done that healing recovery, I would say. And it's it would be an incredible process if you engage it today. If you're not already engaging, just the kind of process that has the result that I just described. So it's okay. It's healthy to feel good about yourself. People with codependency can't relate to that if you, you haven't worked through a lot yet because and online there's always this comparison like I make a positive statement about myself that's true I'm not aggrandizing myself I'm not comparing myself to anybody this is me saying for me I'm happy with me because I know me other people know me and I relate to others but I have this relationship to myself which took a while in recovery for me also and it's getting stronger and stronger all the time to where i just feel good about myself i don't think i'm great i know i'm not perfect and i have lots of weaknesses but you see the difference between being worried about what everybody else thinks oh somebody gonna think i'm weird somebody gonna think i'm this somebody gonna call me a narcissist Eh, you know because the codependent stuff that you need to heal from that inner child and the family of origin, the self-differentiation in a self-partnering kind of process, it reintroduces you to the denied part of self, to the wounded part of self, to the lost part of self, even in codependency. It reintroduces you and helps you come home to that self for the first time ever, knowing that this is healthy narcissism, healthy ego boundaries, healthy self-esteem, healthy self-worth, wherein you see your strengths and your weaknesses, but you find peace inside and you so deserve that today. So I'm out here to help you and, and to help you work with that. And I'm going to have lots more coming at hamahari.co about that in all kinds of different types of media. So video series, eBooks, workbooks, and that kind of thing. But if you'd like to work with me one-on-one -on -one in sessions, this is what I'm helping clients do as well as heal from that borderline or that narcissist whether it's a family member, parent, or a significant other relationship. So I hope that made some sense. I hope that gave you something to think about today. Take care.